Hey, what's up guys, I'm Josh. The Topping LA90 has some incredible specifications and so far has some glowing reviews. Audio Science Review had a great review of this uh, and verified the measurements that were produced by Topping and a few subjective reviews that I've seen have said some really good things about this. Today, I'm gonna tell you if this is all hype and a spec sheet or if this is actually a good product for the money. Off us, the audio store did send this out for review. Topping has nothing to do with this review and of course I'm not being paid or asked to say anything good or bad about this product. This is a subjective review and I use the Imitiva T0s, the SVS Ultra Towers, and the Magnapan LRSs to test and I also cross-referenced uh, the amplifier against my SVS Prime amplifier. Now I also tested in a small traded room like this one and in my living room, which just has typical living room stuff, you know, supermodels, large piles of cash, things like that. This is a class AB amplifier. This features 110 watts into four ohms. This also features some great specifications like 140 dB dynamic range, which is incredibly impressive. And THD numbers that are like 0.00007% uh, getting into the territory of Topping's headphone amplifiers, which have been leading the measurement game for a long time now. Now, I am not a person who believes that measurements are everything, which is why I do subjective reviews. I've never bought anything based off of its measurements alone. Um, I think a good mix of both is something to keep in mind when you're making a purchasing decision on anything. Now, a lot of people might be asking if this stacks well with Topping's other offerings, like their 90 line, uh, which is what this is. Uh, yes, it's a perfect fit. This is obviously black and not silver, but that's fine. Um, in this stack, you have a D90SE DAC, you have an A90 amplifier and a LA90 speaker amplifier. Now this stack is nuts. I will talk about it in a separate video so that we can get you know, a deep dive into that. The input that this LA90 has is a mixture of a three pin XLR and quarter inch input. Now what's tricky is the connection adaptivity. Uh, so this is RCA to quarter inch, uh, which is a strange connection. Uh, these are CESS cables. I think the pair is like around 10 bucks on Amazon and they're made really, really well. The build of this is good. It's very consistent with the rest of their lineup in terms of material and, and quality feeling. Now you might also notice that this thing is actually quite small. It's a perfect uh, comparative fit to the A90 and D90 stack. It's exactly the same width and exactly the same height. It's not without its cost though. And its cost is a enormous power brick. You will need to find a place for this. So that sucks. In terms of inputs, this has three of those XLR inputs, three separate inputs if you want. There's a stereo to mono switch, a low and high gain switch, and a volume versus bypass switch. So for features, this thing is pretty dry. Uh, things like a remote or an inbuilt power supply or uh, subwoofer output would be greatly appreciated in future generations. So listening impressions. This thing is exactly like their headphone amplifiers. It's dead neutral. Now, some of you are gonna hear that and think, great. And some of you are gonna hear that and start yawning and falling asleep in your chair. Um, it is fluff free. It's just, extremely flat, very, very clear. It doesn't have uh, many definable traits that are auditory to me. Now, I do think that this is very impressive and most of the differences that I hear really come with the comparisons to my SVS Prime. So my SVS Prime seems to have a little bit more bass, but it's actually not nearly as clear as the LA90. The LA90 is much faster sounding. It's much more transient in the bass response, though the quantity is slightly less. Given the third party verified measurements, this is probably the more correct bass response. It also sounds just a little bit more honest in a weird way. Like when you hear it, you're like, ah, yeah, that's what that's supposed to sound like compared to this one. This one just seems a little bit more dramatic in the bass response, which isn't a bad thing subjectively, but objectively, I think that this is better. Measurements would also uh, indicate so. Though the bass difference was really only noticeable on my SVS Ultra Towers, I didn't notice the bass difference on the T0s or on the LRSs. The T0s start to have their own bass problems just as a speaker before I got to being able to notice the difference here. And the LRSs really just don't produce that much bass. Um, speaking of the inputs and the LRSs, that's like kind of another aspect of why I would love to see a subwoofer output on this is because with something like those LRSs, which sound incredible on an amplifier like this, you still aren't going to get bass out of it just based off the property of the speaker. And so having something that would play bass 
would be really, really good. Now you can get around this with things like a DAC with multiple outputs. You could run RCA from the D90 into your subwoofer and the XLR into the LA90 and then that into your speakers. That is a way to get around it, but it's not gonna be as easily volume controlled as this. You can get around it if you wanted your pre-outs out of the A90, for example, but still, I would have loved to see a subwoofer output for this. Now, in my interpretation of this, your speakers and room are gonna be far more influential on the sound than this amplifier will be. You might be used to a, a speaker amp with a little bit more pizzazz or whatever, a little bit more treble, a little bit more tonal shifting, a little bit more distortion, a little bit more blah, blah, blah. And going from something like that to this might actually sound a little bit boring. Um, and that's kind of the same way with their, their headphone amplifiers, which I love uh, because their performance is just such an incredible benchmark. But with so many people in the hi-fi community preferring something with a little bit more flavor in it, um, I'm not sure if this is gonna be well suited for every user, though that should not be considered a mark against its performance. Its performance is incredible. Listening to more obscure things like attack speed and tonality and sort of the space between instruments and sounds, uh, this sounds as good as any other amplifier that I've tested in my system. Uh, so very impressed with this. Let's talk about the power of this. So this is 110 watts and two four ohms. So it's definitely not the strongest amplifier at $900. You can get much stronger amplifiers at much cheaper prices. Notably, you can run this in a monoblock option. Uh, I'm gonna talk more about this in my conclusion, but uh, it is notable that you can do that, though I didn't test that because I only have the one. So competition, as said before, there are amplifiers with more power and more features for less money. Uh, this SVS is a good example of both. Uh, though when it comes to measurements, the LA90 stomps on pretty much everything in this price range and it's kind of not even close. So if you're more into measurements than you are features or you don't need the extra features or the extra power, then yeah, uh, your choice is probably clear depending on your needs. Now also, if you include the price of speakers, depending on the speakers, I assume if you're buying a $900 amplifier, you're probably buying some pretty good speakers, even if you're running on a desk. You are getting into the territory of price where you're looking at some very, very, very good studio monitors like Neumann's or Genelex. And I might consider those depending on what price point and speakers you're looking at and depending on what kind of sound you wanna get. So my conclusion, uh, the specifications and measurements are undeniable. This is a very impressive device. Where it does hit some limitations are real world usage, and it mostly comes down to its feature limitations and its power output. Um, 110 watts into four ohms is enough for most speakers in most rooms at most listening volumes, but it won't cover everybody in all rooms in all listening conditions. If you are in a reasonably sized room and you listen at a reasonable listening volume, which I would say definitely keep under 95 dB because you're just killing your ears at that point over time, uh, then you're gonna be fine with any of the speakers that I have here. This is plenty of power for that. But if you have much more inefficient speakers or difficult listening conditions, or you listen incredibly loud, I would consider monoblocking these if you do have the budget for it. As far as performance as a confined device with this feature set, it's great. Um, and if this is all you need, then I think most people are gonna be very happy with this. But if you need anything else like more power or more features, yeah, I would look in other places. Okay guys, thanks a lot for watching. Until the next video, my name's Josh, signing off.